Hello, everybody out there in comic book land. My name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don, and if you're listening to this, you could only be here for one reason, and that's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast brought to you by Comic Book Click. And as always, I am never alone. Sir, please introduce yourself. My name is Dan the Comic Man. Dan the Comic Man is here in studio, and we are here to talk about an anomaly Something that has dropped off of the majority of people's radars. We are here to do a recap and review of the Teen Titans Go to the Movie film that just came out this Friday that we had the immense uh, uh, honor of being able to see a week prior because of Warner Brothers Studios giving us a screener to see Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Um, This was based on a less than popular incarnation of the Teen Titans that has... Uh, suffered it their bit of criticisms, but without giving too many spoilers up front, what did you think of this film? Um, well, someone who was against the Teen Titans Go TV show, uh, I was really surprised of how much I laughed. That is, that's my biggest takeaway from this is I didn't think I was gonna laugh. I thought I was just gonna go to see a superhero movie just because you know I had to. It was work, but no. I actually found myself laughing and hard at certain scenes. There's a lot of actually adult humor in this movie. Yeah. Um, like I said, this goes from the Teen Titans Go series, which uh, when that series came out, you know, it wasn't really, I guess, it didn't have the best reactions. Um, oh, no, everybody thought it was, gonna be, it was terrible. Right. That series pre- uh, premieres in August 23rd of 2013. So it's been about five years of that being the only Teen Titans really uh, in cartoons and stuff. Um, but they took the same cast from the original Teen Titans uh, show that they had made in early 2003. And um, they, what would you say, dumbed down the Well, the you know characters? what it is? is l- look at how, we, how they did it back in the days with Looney Tunes and Tiny Tunes. Yeah. Or, you know, the Muppets and the Muppet Babies. And you know, when the Muppet Babies first came out, everybody was like, oh, this isn't the Muppets. This isn't the Muppets. And, yeah, it's the Muppet Babies. It's not meant to be the Muppets. You know, Right, so it's definitely geared to a more um, Child-like yeah, a younger, demographic, a younger yeah. audience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's weird because when we were kids, we didn't have to have dumbed-down cartoons like this. We had Avatar, The Last Airbender. We, we had well, we, Teen Titans, yeah, Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, I was saying the Unlimited. original Teen Titans, you know, yeah, Justice League Unlimited, and the animated series. Nothing like we that. had was dumbed-down. And when we did have childlike slapstick humor, it was actually really, like, Intelligent writing, Courage the Cowardly Dog, Billy and Mandy, those are intelligent writing shows, but yeah. I guess that they just want to like it's more like, you know, let's just hold their hand through this, you know, they why not? Like I, I'm a I'm against it, but I'm all for anything that's for kids. I think this year and next year are gonna serve to be very important years for the comic book movie uh, you know, genre because we're at the point of almost doing everything there is to do in in this genre i mean i know that sounds crazy but when you have five or six a year you're bound to knock off some. oh yeah like i think 2017 or 2016 one of them had five comic book movies Uh, the the year that uh, that wonder woman came out that was last year um and that was it was more than that because we couldn't even uh nominate every movie that came out that year oh yeah for we had to i think we left off lego batman or one of those one of those films but the the year started off what logan then it went into then then it went into wonder woman yet guardians yet spider-man you had um yeah logan guardian spider-man i feel like dc had another one doctor strange justice league justice league doctor strange thor ragnarok no, Doctor uh, Strange, not the year Strange yeah, sixteen. Uh, Thor Ragnarok, Ragnarok, I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's a lot. It was definitely a lot of films, and, and everything is being greenlit. You know, we're getting um, thumbs up on everything uh, as far as TV shows and new movies are coming by. And we just did on the last episode um, an, a review on the Titans trailer, so we know that that DC sees a viable IP in the Titans, in the Teen Titans. You know, um, and considering that they this was a, a superhero team. Sorry, that uh, basically just started off as psychics, where you have uh, the Dick Grayson Robin, and you have uh, Wally West and Kid Flash, and you have Aqualad, and they just pair those guys together and make them the Teen Titans. Uh, they don't really become the Teen Titans that people know until George Perez and Mark Marv Wolfman introduce the new Teen Titans, and that's when you get you know Robin, Beast Boy, Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and that they become so iconic. That they took just those. I mean, Teen Titans have been going on for years, 90s, early 2000s. They're still making Teen Titans comics now. But that lineup of Robin, Starfire, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Raven is so iconic that it's still the, the cartoon version of, of them. Did you watch the 2003? Uh, Religiously. Uh, Teen Titans show? Religiously. That's, you know what the thing about that show is? That show had a heart. And it had moments. 
there were there there were episodes that were that were like they had you know it wasn't I'm not gonna say scary but adult situation like drama. imagery like the imagery okay it was a very it was a lot of adult imagery stuff that would frighten a kid like that one uh, bad guy who was like messing with people in his mansion where he's like one one room he opens up like a portal that you fall through and he's just like messing with people oh, with dear. the Teen Titans I I'll never forget that episode and I know they play around with Tara on there yes um, a Tara's lot a big deal on that show um the relationship the buddy and, relationship and the thing between is, Slade it. Slade is a dark, dark character in the 2003 Teen Titans. Like, he is up there with, like, Lex Luthor in, in the Justice League on his show. Like, Yeah, just as important as Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Robin is, like you said, Slade Wilson, Deathstroke. Uh, Deathstroke actually um, debuts for DC Comics in the new Teen Titans number two. So he he's as tied to the franchise as any one of those he's characters. He's like their, their bad, he is their bad guy since the comics. Right. Consider like what people would consider a high point of the character, or just uh, you know what he was able to do as far as being a villain is that whole Judas contract storyline, which is, and I think they might have played with this in the in the series, but the idea that um, Slade sends Terra into the Titans, um, knowing fully well that she's going to. Oh yeah, no, them. no, no. They had a whole like three part episode. And I remember like. They they liked her. She was really cool. She was yeah, getting Beast along Boy with them. Gets, gets like a little bit romantic. And then you her. find out that she's been working with Slade the whole time, and it's just like how Justice League, like the the Justice League cartoon with Hawk Girl, right? The where betrayal. it turns out Hawk Girl was was betraying them. Like that that was great. And then it shows like the the battle of sides for Tara. Like you you, you know she she uh, got battling really, for her soul. She had real. She was really akin with these with these group of teenagers. She liked them a lot. Yeah, and, but she still had to do her job, and there was a whole like you see how the city looked. You see that she you can't she can't be stopped. Her and Slade were like were really powerful together, like, right? Fighting wise, they were strategic. So that show and it battled with. I mean, even when you're talking about it, I can feel a weight from that show that didn't exist in the Teen Titans Go. Yeah, because Teen Titans yeah. Go, it, it's just like it's it's nonstop piss and fart jokes. It's like how do we make? There's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. I, I want to say that there's also a lot of smart jokes there too i my thing is um and I, uh, maybe we should get into this before we get in, uh any further but this idea of you know what a comic book movie should be right we've seen you know what is arguably considered some of the best comic book movies ever with the dark knights of war uh winter soldier stuff like that we've also had our socks blown off with things like guardians of the galaxy deadpool lego batman stuff like that so it shows you how far you know you can go in either direction it just has to be good period right is that what we're coming yeah, to but you know what and this movie nails it right this to me i would i would say i would agree this movie nails a comic book movie at, right. at least the the tone of of golden age comics the way the way it came but the way comics were like you know good guy wins bad guy loses you know adversities and, and know who you are and be true to yourself. Yeah. You know, but and that's same, what this movie showed. But in the same sense, comics should have a level of excitement. They should have a level of kind of like awesomeness that doesn't even really have to make oh, sense. No, of course, Bill. And I think that this film has that. And, um, you know, it's funny because with other films, we would have been like eviscerating the storytelling or the you know the acting or uh the third uh the third act of the the you know sky falling out of the, the sky yeah and all that kind of stuff um but we don't i find myself having problems criticizing this too harshly um they set up what the premise was which is just that these guys want a movie and i get that um we spoke it sucks because um uh, me and yogi had an episode about batman we went on very, very long about the character and what it takes to make the character. The same way we're talking about what it takes to make a superhero movie. And one of the things I was talking about was the lack of Robin in, in the cinematic um, universe as far as Batman yeah. is concerned. You only got Chris O'Donnell. He, yeah, he says Chris O'Donnell and is a such a... And a cheap version with uh, Joseph nope, Gordon-Levitt. You're not going to nope, count Joseph nope, Gordon-Levitt? Nope, no, no. Nope, because his name is Robin. I'm not going to do it. His name is Robin. I'm not going to do it. I, I refuse to. <laughs> Unless they're standing next to each other in suit. Doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. He, his name could have been Terry McGinnis and I would just I would have rolled my eyes anyway. <laughs> it's the same thing. I think that Robin needs to be there uh, for Batman to show kind of the audience, because a lot of what Batman, I think, makes Batman cool is his inner monologue. And you don't get that if you are watching a movie because he can't say the things that he wants to say. The same way with Rorschach. Rorschach, a lot of what gets Rorschach off or what gets him, uh, you know, 
what makes him popular as a character is his mentality, which you only get when he does the Rorschach's journal, yada, 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 yada. You don't get that with Batman. So if Batman's able to explain to somebody who's right there beside him his reasoning, you can kind of get a little bit of that inner monologue. But this uh, movie is the first time anyone's given a chance to Robin a character, you know, since you would say Batman Forever or Batman and Robin. And then uh, going forward, giving the Teen Titans a movie. And who would have thought that the movie that they would make is the movie about these Teen Titans, right? Because oh, it, It's very meta. Yes. It's a very... It's, a, it's a, I guess that's what it's cool now in comic book movies. Everybody wants to do fourth wall breaks. Everybody has to wink to the camera. and You know, I get it. Sure. It's cool. It's excessive, but it's cool. But this movie did a good job at actually poking fun at, at comic book movies. Yeah, definitely. Because we don't get movies about, about sidekicks. We have a team-up movie about villains. No Teen Titans movie. Yeah, and I mean, I would say that the Suicide Squad was just as much of a gamble as the Teen Titans. Like people were aware of them of these both these uh, properties. I would say there's more intrinsic fans of the Teen Titans than there is of the Suicide. No, of Squad. course, the Suicide Squad has has fans of three, maybe four Harley, characters: Harley, Harley Deadshot. Uh, Deadshot. Yeah, uh, I can, I can uh, Cap, uh, Boomerang's on the team, right? Just, yeah, like, Captain Boomerang. Like people, and people like Katana, like, who sword uh, captures the souls of his victims, and that's all you need to know about that's her. That's why I brought her up. That's why I brought her for up. the rest of the movie. Um, so, but no, real, yeah, it's a gamble, and, and it was a gamble that didn't pay off because you know, I guess David Ayer tried doing. I guess everybody saw James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy and was like, "We need to do that. We, we need to do that." Every five minutes. Oh my god! Uh, which means, um, you know, everyone, everyone has a one liner. I think then, so, you know. My last last uh, spoiler list thing I want to say is that this movie knows you don't want to give it a chance. Oh, this yes. This movie knows yeah. you don't want to give it a shot. And it dares you by the end to say it wasn't good. It, it no. goes out of its way yeah. to give you all the things that you wanted from DC movies from the get, which is the history. You got, you got characters that pop up in here that you've never seen in animated form, let alone in a movie. Uh, you have uh, in jokes with studios that you just want because sometimes with with these big companies when they do something wrong you just want them to admit it you'll you'll be willing to go past and let them and forgive them and forget and go on with them with the next journey as long as they admit that they were wrong but if they don't admit that they were wrong it makes you think that the next venture that they go on is going to be misplaced as well because they have not seen what their what their problems are like you have guys like Joel Schumacher that have apologized for Batman ver- forever. Right, exactly. He's no, he, sorry, not Batman Forever. He apologized for Batman and Robin. I think also Joel George Schumacher, Clooney also was like George Clooney keeps a picture of himself in the Batman outfit in his trailer on every movie set he goes to. To remind him how bad it could be. No, to remind him to never take a film for money. Oh, okay, that's literally his <laughs> excuse. He's like, like I was I, so, I was he's so like, hot I, in that I, suit. I walk around with the Batman costume with me in the Batman costume everywhere I go, so I can remember to never take a film for money. That, that's crazy. But you gotta have some standards. You gotta have some standards. And they talk about films. They talk about money. They talk about all that. So let's get deep into Teen Titans. Go to the movies. I will spoiler, say, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. That's our spoiler alert. Panther spoiler alert. Um. But you guys should go see it. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I think come back to the podcast and you'll understand everything that we're talking about. Hey, okay, look, I'm gonna tell you right. It, it this has this makes no sense. It, it the the whole line, the reason why it's there, it just makes no sense. But it was one of my biggest laugh out moments. Robin is trying to find a catchphrase. He is like every superhero has a catchphrase, and he's trying to catch a, find a catchphrase, and he just comes out with the most outlandish catchphrase ever. That goes crack an egg on it. Caw! It's hilarious. And it's I, so funny. Cr- I was cracking up because it just it was. Well, the thing is, this movie plays it straight. Even when they're joking, they play it straight. No. Um, I, I since then I can say, I I have taken in quite a few Teen Titans Go episodes. They they got it, man. They know what they're doing. I don't know if they knew what they were doing in the beginning, or maybe I wasn't ready to accept what they were doing in the beginning. But enough time has gone by where they have created their own meta jokes, their own meta universe. And I'm with it. I want to be no, a will part of that with you club. On that one. It's 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 a fun club that I used to make fun of because they put you know party hats on their nose and you know and they and they uh, had whoopee cushions. But now my serious group, everyone's so serious that no one's having fun. And I look at the Teen Titans go and I go, well, I'd rather be there than have everything right and no one have fun with it. 
yeah. which is Justice League. Everyone looked amazing. You see that lineup? Yeah. The CGI, everything looked gorgeous, but no one had fun. Even with the, with the jokes that they were telling. You can even see you can see Ben Affleck's face was so uninterested. And this, jo- this movie jokes about death. Like, there's death jokes in this. <laughs> Constantly. And we'll get, matter of fact, let's bust this thing wide open. This is the Teen Titans. Go to the movie. Uh, full spoiler review. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Because spoilers are incoming. First, let's talk a little bit about that uh, DC uh, Girls short. short. That was actually a really entertaining short. Real, uh, real little short. Uh, it was starring Batgirl, uh, Barbara Gordon. She's trying to get to the rest of the DC girls because they're fighting Mr. Freeze. Who but, she's like a big fan of. Yeah. And it's a, you see a parent that's in her room like she's a big well, fan if, of if Mr. You know, Freeze. If you, know, um, if you know Barbara, you know that her father is Jim Gordon, uh, James Gordon, the commissioner of the Gotham City Police. So he, uh, she's waiting for him to go to sleep so that she can escape her house. And it's these cool things where she sees the cameras and seeing him falling asleep, brushing his teeth, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then she basically runs to go assist Jessica Cruz, Green Lantern, Bumblebee, Wonder Woman, Zatanna. Was Supergirl there? Yeah. Okay. I had her there a year, but I wasn't 100% sure. And then they kind of just saved the day. It was a nice little cute. I thought the animation style was amazing. Um, it reminded me of the little Pixar shorts. That yeah, and what, I, what I liked things. about it was that in the beginning of the short is no one was going to wait for her. Right, Wonder Woman yes. made it apparent that no one's gonna wait for her. And by the end of the short, she got there first. Yeah. And did that cute little what took you guys so long kinda like I, I thought that was adorable. Real cute. Real cute. Uh real cool way to show the female uh roster that DC has because they have a, yeah, they it was do like a have little a, mini birds of prey short. They do have a boisterous female roster. If you take out the females of the X Men, Marvel has like Black Widow. You got Captain Marvel and stuff. Yeah. But a lot of the females from Marvel are the Jean Greys, the Storms, the Kitty Prides. You start playing that game. So um, it go DC, yeah. No, I think DC got, does. I, I've always said DC has always done characters better, even if I've liked Marvel's products more. Yeah. I've well, DC had, understands that they're characters. They never once try to be human, whereas Marvel, yeah. there's a more of that human nature. So yeah, they try to find that root. They're, they're set in New York. So you, you feel the weight of, like, there's death in there. Yeah, there's death in DC, but. Marvel is like killing the game. He, but anyways, and right off, right off the rip, when we're wondering about how whether or not this is going to kill the game, we get a version of the DC opening, DC Universe <laughs> opening that's yes. animated. Yes. And I, I jab you in your chair, and I'm like, they've already started. We've already, <laughs> they've already started. This thing is already. Uh, Wait, well, wasn't it? Wasn't the Marvel logo? Right after that, you you hear a bunch of pages turn, and oh you get the Marvel <laughs> like the comic book pages, but they're all Teen Titan pages, and it's uh, it's mimicking the Marvel comic opening and that combination of both the animated DC opening and the Marvel comics opening uh, parody. I already, I was in love. I was, I was good. I no, was yeah, good. It, but if you hooked us in the opening logos, how do you do that? Like. How That's does the amazing. Teen Titans go hook you from the opening logo? The only thing that did that for me was Lego Batman when he does the whole, yeah. like, uh, all black, black oh, screen. Yeah. All good movies start with a black screen. Yes. Like, that, it's it's so good. You know you know what we, we've we sat in on enough of these movies that we understand the formula. So if you can show us that you know the formula and play around with it, I'm, yeah, I'm in for it's that. Not a, it's not just about making fun of the tropes and the cliches because if you if you sit here and you're making fun of the tropes and cliches, but you still have the tropes and cliches in your movie. You're just as bad for self for being self aware right. as you would for not being aware. But when you do it right, and I, I don't, don't, and I've heard that too. I've heard that too. That's a criticism too, right? That that's coming now. No, uh, yeah. Now that the fourth wall breaking is more prevalent, people are saying you don't get a pass on doing bad storytelling by just breaking the fourth wall and saying that that is bad storytelling. Yeah, like like when a uh, Deadpool and Deadpool two looks at the screen and says that's just lazy writing. What do you mean that's just lazy? Don't be, don't have be a lazy, lazy writer. Yeah, yeah, don't be a lazy just, writer. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And they, they don't do that on here. They, there's no like, well, we didn't have the budget for this. You know, they, they didn't they didn't do that in this film, which, I mean, it's animated, so it's a little different. But yeah, we see that um, in Jump City is the terrible balloon man. He's destroying things with his girth and he's just moving his weight all around. Um, which is actually pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the whole opening did remind me a lot of the 2013 Titans. Yeah. Minus the whole, like, minus the, the singing, the yeah. song number, I it the the way they were in the city, the way Balloon Man looked, the way the animation was, it kind of did look like they were blending that anime manga style with westernized and hand drawn animation. And there's a lot of callbacks to that animation style and a lot of callbacks to that old Teen Titans theme, which is in everybody's head. You know, you hear. I think they might play that Teen Titans theme more than they play the Teen Titans theme for this show. Yeah. that this movie's based on. Well, even um, Hi Hi Puffy Amiumi was in... Puffy Amiumi, the group that wrote the original Teen Titans song, was in this. Yeah. They they sung the, the, the ending credits. Which is pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool. Um, the Teen Titans show up. 
but mostly, um, you know, to the chagrin of Balloon Man, who has no idea who they are. They think he, he thinks they're like a B-level Justice League or something Oh, yeah, like didn't this. he call... He called them the Justice League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, a, like, which Justice League are you or something I think like he that. actually... Doesn't he call them the Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, I feel like there's a Guardians of the Galaxy joke in there. There was a Guardians of the Galaxy joke. I know there was a... There was I think a, he's, yeah, I lot, think he said, they aren't you? Marvel are jokes. you guys the Guardians of the Galaxy? And then it... Uh, it no, no, no. The Guardians of the Galaxy joke came from the Beyonders, I think. Oh, okay. The Challengers of the, the Unknown? The Challengers of the Unknown or whatever the name is, yeah. Um, We get... What's in here, though, is one of my recur- my favorite recurring uh, jokes of this film, which uh, after Blue Man is just completely confused, uh, Beast Boy says hey cyborg they don't know who he is <laughs> and then that happens like four times in this film and so cyborg pulls out a, a tape you know sadly it wasn't night begins to shine but still he <laughs> yes. puts in the tape uh and you get this teen titans go rap that we've heard a million times before but it was always sung by little yachty and rapped by little yachty in this one it's rapped by the heroes which to me intrinsically gives it more heart because to me in my head canon they wrote this song to amp each other up when yeah. they go out on hero on, on missions and that's so much more cooler than a song existing that they can't hear in the in the movie right they made this song this as well well uh a uh, uh, composer will compose a song to make an action scene more lit. <laughs> yeah. uh, these guys have wrote in their own song to make their. They're basically crunk hit. from from Emperor's New Groove, and they wrote their own theme song. Yeah, they wrote their own theme song. It's cool. It raps. It explains all of their powers and stuff. But as they're doing this, as they're doing this rap song, Balloon Man just walks away. He walks away. And then away. Justice League comes and beats them up in the background. Yeah, he walks away. He steals uh, like a safe. He puts it in a balloon, stealing all his stuff, putting it in the balloons. Um, they're dancing. They're doing all kinds of stuff. The, uh, I like how cyborgs, the speakers come out of cyborgs' <laughs> bag all the time and stuff. But t- the Justice League intervene. You know, Superman, Bats, Wonder Woman, and uh, Green Lantern, I want to say. No, no, it was just Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and Superman. Oh, no Bats. Yeah, it was no Bats. Yeah, cause oh, because uh, Batman's getting ready for his movie that's coming yeah. out. Which, speaking of which, um, what what I love about Certain superhero movies is when they do superhero redemptions. Whether a, whether an actor played a superhero movie and it was terrible, and then he does another one, you know, i.e. Michael B. Jordan or you know, Ryan Reynolds. Chris Evans. I love. Well, he wasn't bad as Johnny Storm. Eh. He wasn't really. He wasn't bad of everybody in the, of everybody in that movie. I actually liked him the most. He was. He's Chris Evans. He's always cool. And in that early days, yeah. But anyways, Nicolas Cage. Who was supposed to play Superman a long time ago actually voices Superman in this movie. So it is a it's perfect. And he actually sound, like he just has Nicolas Cage's oh yeah, you know right, right, just right. sounding like Superman. You guys are not really heroes. It's like, oh, hello, funny. Robin and Beast Boy. Yeah, it's really it's really, really funny. <laughs> um, you know, he yeah, he's supposed to be uh, and f- full, 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 full circle in a way that almost breaks your heart. He was, the, like you said, he was going to be Superman in the film that we only found out that he was going to be Superman to the extent that he was because of John Snepp who passed away last week. So yes. roughly around the same time that we found out the passing of John Snepp, they play from there to Superman uh, uh, Lives. And just, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's they're, they're told that um, the Titans are too childish. They don't. Ne- they never save anything, even though they save room for dessert. Um, and <laughs> they, they don't take anything seriously enough. And they, if they did do any of those, then the proof would be they would have their own movie. And because they don't have their own movie, it's proof that um, they're not they're not uh, legitimate enough. So I, those are there's a two there are two arguments in there that I want to talk about. One is that the hall- hallmark of being a legit IP a movie, or can you still be a kind of crappy IP? And still get a movie <laughs> or something tried out on you, or do you think that is the the pinnacle? I think of everybody where should IP get a chance. Everybody, I think chance? everybody should get a chance. And it comes back to the Guardians of the Galaxy argument. Who the hell was the Guardians of the Galaxy? It's true. Who were they? And, and you know the the, the their specific. I only knew Rocket from uh, Marvel's Capcom. And their specific <laughs> people that they had weren't even the original Guardians of the Galaxy from the comics. So right. even if yeah. most Star like Hulk old and heads, and stuff, even if yeah. mo- old Marvel heads. Like know who the guardians are by name. How, how are they supposed to know who Groot is or or Gamora? Right. Well, I know Drax the Destroyer is very important in like Infinity Gauntlet, right? Right. Yeah. And same for Nebula. But only because he has his revenge thing towards what's his face. But Yandu, who's an OG of Guardians of the Galaxy, it he wasn't was he like a, a side character. Wasn't he the he's first an OG? Member? Yeah, he's an OG. Um, him, the guy that Sylvester Stallone plays, Starhawk. 
him and you know when they have that moment in I think a post credit in Guardians where you see Starhawk talking to his team. That's, that's the, the original. Th- isn't yeah. that the original Guardians of the Galaxy? So yeah, so you don't even and see that. That probably would have been a way worse movie. So oh yeah, good work. I mean Miley Cyrus was one of the voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good work look, here. Look, 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 There's like, like three fake, CGI characters. Fake Kate Blanchett from Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still yeah. say that's fake Helena from Ragnarok. Yeah, it looks kind of funny. It does look kind of, the the eye makeup. So no, you somewhere. should always give these characters a chance. They're like uh, Marvel has taken a lot of chances on a lot of characters that you never thought you would like. And turned out to be some of the best comic book movies of all time. Now for that, me, it was Captain uh, America and Iron Man. I knew who they were, but I didn't give a crap about Captain America or Iron Man. Yeah. And now Captain America to me is the best comic book trilogy of all time. I can see that, you know. Um, and then when you go to character, like, and this is not throwing shade, but Batman has had incarnation after incarnation, and they seemingly are ha- get, having less and less of a hold on what what makes that character tick, which is making them lose a footing. When it when you consider where Batman was in cinema ten years ago to where he at, where he is now ten years ago Dark Knight comes out doesn't it yeah t- so, ten years ago the Dark Knight came out and now people are like um yeah Harley yeah Joker and Joaquin Phoenix so it's like if you know the tried and true IPs are gonna stand the test of time take some chances take some chances you have thousands of and comic do something book like this to think from do something like this an animated film where you only spend ten million they people are like oh they had a disappointing thing they made four million this weekend or I think four million between Friday and Saturday so they made about that's half not, their yeah that's not bad they made about ha- half their budget in one weekend hopefully by the time the month's over they'll make their entire budget so and it, and they went up against Mission Impossible and they knew that. They knew they were going up against Mission Impossible, knowing that not every no, they went parent up against is Mission Impossible. See... They went up against the second Jurassic Park, the second Mamma Mia. You know, yeah, they, yeah, they went yeah, up yeah. against some some movies that that teenagers clout, and adults yeah. are going to want to see. And the hat And it comes back to what uh what what uh Gene Siskel used to say is like you know I understand that movies need to be made for kids, and I will always go see a kids movie, but make the movie good for adults too. These kids don't have money to go pay their own movie ticket. I actually think that's the difference between. Adults who who um like who buy movies and who don't, like you're more more uh you're probably more prone to buy a child's movie on DVD if you went and the experience with your child was a was a fun one, you know. Uh, I don't know. Like my mom wasn't running to go buy me Yu Gi Oh on or, or Pokemon yeah, I'm on not DVD. Run and take my kid to the Emoji Movie, you know. Right, but that's what I think. I don't think kids like that either. I think no one likes the Emoji Movie. My point is, uh, if there's nothing for the for the for the parent. The movie's gonna be forgettable because these movies to them, they don't know what what the kid is watching now, today, this month. Next year will be a completely different franchise. That mom, I need to see this movie. I need to see the uh uh My Hero Academia movie. What? Uh, I guess we're going to go see that. And if there's nothing in there for them, they're a little bit less inclined to want to go on that adventure again. Where where with the Incredibles, right? You see Incredibles one with your kid. Next thing you know, now they're twenty, and you can go see Incredibles too. Um, you're you're more willing to go on that route because they they had things for you in there. And I felt like with this Teen Titans movie, while there was definitely things for kids, they had stuff for me. Oh, for I will OG, I will say that uh, that there was a lot of humor. It's like oh, okay, spoilers. Obviously, there was they want to get their movie done. They want Teen, t- teen Titans want their own movie. You want to know how they do it? They decide to go back in time and stop every hero from becoming a hero. Oh, yeah, they stop. They, awesome. they stop Krypton from blowing up. They make sure that the Waynes go down a nice alley. Happy, uh, the the happy, turtles. They they happy. turn. <laughs> they turn the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles around from walking into the slime. It's amazing. And then when, then when you see them like mess up the timeline, you see their original uh, comic book debut. The their cover disappears. Like you see Superman on the Action cover of Comics, Action Comics, yeah. and it's now he's no more on the cover. You don't see Batman on his cover. So these this is funny. And then when they go back in time, and you can only do that playing with the history. And DC has a really really rich history that they choose movies for some reason have choose chosen not to play with. Uh, it's it's incredibly frustrating because they have decades and decades of continuity that these movies won't touch on. Um, and the Titans have their own continuity. That's where you get a Slade. That's why Slade slides right into this because he's been in their continuity. So the other co- question or conversation I want to have is, do you think that there is a too jokey, a too childish, and do you think that this franchise is there? Uh, it's it, it's a very – the line is really blurred because yeah. this, this New Year's uh, of this year um, – they had a whole Teen Titans Go Marathon on Cartoon Network, okay. and I was at my friend's house for the new, for New Year's night. Right, and she had they, they both her and her sister both have daughters. You know, the, the, every, there's kids in that house. It's a kids party. Right. So yes, Teen Titans Go was actually on TV the whole night. 
while all these kids were running around for New Year's and playing with presents from Christmas. And I'm sitting there watching it. Like, I, I, I just wanted to sit down, and I watched, like, two, three episodes, and it actually had me snickering a little bit. Yeah, a lot of these jokes are way too, like, kid jokes. Like, like I can't really put, like, I can't, like, say what the jokes are that's very kids, but you can tell the difference between a kid's joke and an adult joke. So I saw an episode yesterday, and they were in the Batcave, and they were doing a scan of the Batcave, and I saw two things that were all I needed to know that this show is legit at least in my eyes. One was they had the button from the Watchmen in the back game. Oh, they Something did? that's currently going on right now in comics is the idea of where this Watchmen universe come from. They have, now they're they in have the there. smiley they have pin. With the blood on it, right? Wow, that's good. Then they go to the penny, and instead of uh, Abraham Lincoln being on the penny, it's Zod. <laughs> it says, in Zod we trust. <laughs> And Zod has a neck brace on. Oh, <gasps> wow. So it's, you understand that's what I'm saying? Actually, so it's like. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Like, this is, this is uh, hilarious. You're looking at your history. You're telling us that the things that we've seen matter. You, you're you not just brushing away. Because every time we do a Batman movie, we're brushing away every other Batman movie that's ever existed. Unless it's a trilogy or something. So, you know. I think there's room for both the Dark Knight and Teen Titans Go. I think there's room for Ant no, Man definitely. and Winter Soldier. Listen, any movie that in theaters has no problem make, making fun of the Martha scene oh, definitely gets a pass. But the Martha scene, I think, is becoming the uh, yeah. But they did it the best. Every every everyone's going. Through they that. did it great. Everyone's going through that. Oh, What's your mother's name, Martha? Oh my god! And then you see this like weird animation style where like Batman's cheeks is rosy with the, like the Pikachu eyes. Oh my god! My mother's name is Martha too. Hey, what's your father's name? Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. done, man. Thomas. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I do think that there's there's enough room for for like I said, it's the Muppet Babies. You no, know? like, you know, we all love the Muppets growing up, but sometimes we need the Muppet Babies to look. Perfect example. No one ever had a problem with a pup named Scooby Doo. In right. fact, to a lot of people, a pup named Scooby Doo is, is a, a classic. Is a definitive it's Scooby-Doo, a definitive yeah. Scooby Doo spinoff. So, what's so different about a pup named Scooby Doo and Teen Titans Go? There's still would, those kid jokes. I would, I would put those. Th- I would say that. I that I think that's a perfect uh, equivalency because um, what people don't realize if you're older now and now and you watch a pup named Scooby Doo, they play a lot with the mythos. They play a lot of parody with the mythos. One of the characters' names is Red Herring, and a Red Herring <laughs> in a mystery is the is a fake like a fake lead. Like uh, some th- somebody that you think is going to be the person, yeah, subversion, not. and so he is always red herring, and Fred always thinks it's red herring, and that's, and that's the that's joke. That's the one who jo- who Fred always picks, and who yeah. says he's the one who did it's it, Fred, and it's, he's it's never the one who did yeah. it. It's never because red literally red, red herring. And now means it takes me now to get red, wow. yeah, red herring literally. I always because I rem- uh, I'm that. now looking back and I remember every ending of every episode where he's like, it was definitely him, and, and he's like Fred it wasn't is, him, and Fred. While in the regular series is the smart one that always figures it out, as a kid is a conspiracy theorist because you have to be a conspiracy theorist to figure out that it's old man. Yeah, but you Jenkins know what? This was a this you know. was a perf- that was a perfect origin story to like a character developing origin story. Like yeah. you get to see why like that's how they are. That's how they always are. And well, then that's you see, how they like, were as you, kids. So you see, like, Velma adults. walking around with, with a, a magnifying glass that makes her eye one big ass eye. Like yeah, like it's it's fun. It's funny that I think Teen Titans go. Because of this movie, it's going to make me want to go back and watch, uh, maybe pick a few little episodes. <laughs> I, to just I've, sit. Done it. I've done it. I'm telling like, you. I'm going to sift it. through. I'll, I'll definitely go online to see who's, what people's uh, opinions are, what's the top five better shows. I'm probably going to see Night Begins to Shine again. Oh, it's amazing. They have a four part episode. Uh, we'll get into that in a bit. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't think that they're, they're too silly. And obviously, they're not too silly to have their own movie because they have one here. But in the film. They're told that they're too silly to have a movie, but they decide to stop by Batman's movie, Batman Again. It's coming out in theaters. The title of the movie is Batman Again, which shows you how often they've played oh, up God. this trope of this. And everybody's here. We got Supergirl, I think, is wearing, uh, or um, she was wearing Plastic Man as a dress. That's a bit of yeah, adult, Supergirl was wearing a adult Plastic joke Man. there. A- a- Adam. Which is kind of a, a, an adult weird joke. Like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. The Adam is constantly being uh, crapped on in this. And we actually get an appearance of the Challengers of the Unknown, one of the most. Uh, niche uh, character groups in DC's lore. Somebody that if you haven't been reading the comics, you won't know. And they make a point to say in this film, like, who are you guys? And they joke around with that, um, that everybody is more known than the Titans, or at least taken more seriously than the Titans. So this movie is very self They weren't even on the list. They weren't even they weren't on, the on the list for the premiere. Exactly. Robin wasn't on the list to go to Batman's own movie premiere. Exactly, exactly. And that starts up another joke, right? How are we going to get in? 
Uh, portal? Oh my portal. god, <laughs> that's that's great because that it, that that kind of like to me I saw, I find that as like a joking commentary on plot convenience. Yeah, because the thing is, Raven can make portals to go to anywhere, and they seem at this in this movie at various points they're denied access. And it seems like the end of the world until they realize, oh, yeah, Raven can make a portal. Which is just plot convenience. Portal? Question mark? Portal, period. And that's it. And so they do get into the theater um, where, uh, oh, well, before uh, they get into, before they actually start talking, we see some pretty oh, funny okay, this uh, is... credits come up. Oh, man. <laughs> we, see, we see what was in the trailer, which is the Alfred the movie joke, right? That they're making a movie about Batman's best friend, and it's Alfred the movie. <laughs> Um, Coming but, next, next summer. But, yes. The Alfred the movie joke was funny, and it was funny when I saw it in trailers. I didn't realize how far they were going to take it, because we, when he sees the Alfred the movie joke that's coming out next, uh, the Alfred the movie that's coming out next summer, he goes, oh, don't worry, they're going to make a movie about me next, next summer. And then we see the trailer for well, no, it. Wasn't it, it wasn't the Alfred movie was coming this summer, and then coming next, next summer was Utility. Was the car. It was the car, and, and then the it was the utility belt. Movie. And that's where Cyborg goes, bro, the car got a movie for you. And then we get the utility belt movie. Uh, so they're making movies about everybody and everything, including just random inanimate objects that Batman seems to own. And this has thrown Robin for a loop, especially in the last one. The last trailer, he swore it was about him and got up on stage and told everyone it was about him. And they found out it wasn't, and they were basically laughed out of the theater. We also introduced to Jade Wilson, um, who is being credited as being the greatest, like, what, film producer? Yeah, she was the greatest superhero film producer. Of all time. So I want to say a uh, hodgepodge of Patty Jenkins and Kevin Feige. Like, that, ooh, that kind of person. Who's yeah, think of, like, all the best, like, Russo brothers, Kevin Nolan. Think of all, like, the best comic book ca- comic book directors you can think of. Yeah, you got them all together, and you get Jade Wilson. And Jade Wilson is giving, she literally yells into the crowd, all of you guys are getting movies. You see Swamp Thing in there, Nightwing's out there, uh, uh, Flash, Kid Flash, uh, fa- um, the the... Uh, Phantom Stranger, deep DC cuts. Everybody's there, but yeah, kids ain't getting their movie, man. Uh, and they're really bummed. Which out comes about to it. one of my favorite parts, like of the movie, was I didn't. I, I liked well, once they left the theaters. They were in like they were uh, the background had a whole bunch of movie posters, and if you pay attention to the movie posters, they were all jokes on either bad comic book movies or just comic book movies in general. And a lot of them they were had, bad they, DC joke movies. Yeah, they had one, they had one with, with there was Joker on the cover and it was Yawn of Justice. Yeah, it was Joker facing off with Batman. And then there was one with the uh, Batgirl and Supergirl and it was just called BVS. Yep. And you see them hugging and everything. Like, this is... That, that stuff was funny. Jonah, Jonah Rex with the T-Rex as Jonah Hex. I thought that was pretty funny too. And he's in it a couple of times to show him. Captain oh, yeah, Marvel, they did show John, and which Jonah... Which was a Hex, really Captain nice Marvel. animation on Jonah Hex. Yeah. Like, his mouth looked really cool. Yeah, the, uh, deep cut stuff with that. Um, we see Slade break into Star Labs to steal the crystal. The Titans arrive to try to stop him, but they are swiftly defeated by Slade's Mind control. <laughs> Slade. <laughs> Look over there. Oh, sorry. Mind manipulation. <laughs> Which, oh, man. The, That's the, what it is. The jo- uh, oh, don't forget. I, I that they, 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 um, once they get kicked out of the theater, they're told that they need to find a villain. And one of the things that makes a villain is that you should be able to say his name, name in, in one in go. A dramatic, in a dramatic way in one go. So uh, to show, they're like, Lex Luthor. And I think they go... Um, who else do they go? They go somebody I, else. I think it was Lex Luthor. Oh, no. oh Sinestro. Sinestro. That was it. Sinestro. And then they do Rainbow Raider. Yo, look. Some, oh, man. I love Starfire so much. Starfire Rainbow is probably my favorite. Rainbow Raider. Oh. Starfire is probably my favorite uh, um, character, I think so. From she, the teen, from, t- from Teen Titans Go? She's definitely my the favorite of the characters. You know, the thing is, they <laughs> did, you know what they did about They did her really well. She's an alien. She doesn't know what's going on. And but the thing is, they took her dialogue, the way her mannerisms are of the 2003 Teen Titans, and they just they just did it here. She There's no difference. Has... There's no over the topness. And the funny thing is, her dialogue, she's saying the before everything. Yeah, that was funny. It's like it... I I feel like she is probably the most um you know innocent in this, the most wide eyed in this. Um, she obviously can fight crime and all that kind of stuff, but I do like how they play Starfire as like in the, the beginning of the movie when Bal- uh, when Balloon Man was shooting uh, a, a kitten balloons or whatever, like uh, stuffed animal balloons. Yeah, and she's just like kitty, and she's squeezing them all till they pop, yeah, and then they pop, and yeah. she's just like squeezing like twenty of them until they and they're all just popping, and she's just sad. Squeezes the next one, she's sad. That's perfect. That's childlike humor that 
works. When when you have childlike humor that works, I will appreciate what you're trying to do. When you have childlike humor that's like Norm of the North, but but or but, Angry Birds movie, but I'm not going to respect it. But check this out though, there was still very jokey stuff in this because you have the whole like look over there, look behind you joke. That no, but that's that that is brilliant. But it was I'm sorry, that's hell. brilliant. It was funny as hell. They're like, "There's nothing behind us." No, no, no. You're gonna want to so guys. Look. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't look. But I have to see what's and, all. And Yo, they look, and there's funny. nobody there. And then you see Slade, Slade getting away. Because uh, you know, to me, it's it, they're joking on how when you get when they have the first encounter of hero and villain. How does it always go in every comic? Somebody book runs away. They get Someone away. always gets away. There's always a quick two second fight, and then you have like the the fan in you is just like, oh my god, I've read this in the comics. And then you throw your shield. They catch the shield, and then they jump off the building. Yeah, and you can't that, that, find do them. you get that? You get like two seconds of monologue. You get like, who the hell are you? Oh, I'm this guy. I'm here to do this. I'm here to do that. Don't oh no, know? I'm gonna stop you. I'm Electro. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Don't oh, you know? My <laughs> god. But yeah, he, no one says happy birthday to me. We get a bunch of Slade, Slade, Slade. Slade. Which to me, I look if you're, so gonna, if you're gonna fourth wall break, f- go all out in fourth wall break. They they went studio fourth wall. How do you like the Deadpool the Deadpool jokes? I think that's funny because even Slade says it. If anything, Deadpool is a rip off of me. I came out first. He actually stated, says that. It's been openly stated that the, the Deadpool is basically a rip off of Deathstroke. Yeah, like well, I mean, didn't Deathstroke come out like 1992? The uh, the Terminator Deathstroke came out Deathstroke, like the, 1980. Oh, it was 1980. Yeah, with the New Teen Titans. New Teen Titans number two. Deathstroke shows up a good ten. Oh, years that was his before. first appearance. Yeah, yeah. and a then good... he has his first full-on comic, The Terminator. Oh, later on, yeah, but a, fir- a full ten years before Deadpool shows up, you already have the half orange, half blue, or black, depending on how you see him. Uh, Deathstroke, and he's never once called Deathstroke in this film. Just like he was never once called Deathstroke in Teen Titans. They said that Deathstroke was a little bit too Wait, they didn't intense. Tell- I-, I know they were going to. Uh, they were gonna say Deathstroke, but they. Said Deadpool instead, yeah, and I thought that was hilarious. He's like, "I'm not Deadpool," and like, well, you, you look like Deadpool. You know, you could be copying him. Yeah, if he, anything, he's a copy of me. I l- I was laughing at that. Uh, we go to the next day after after Slade gets away, and we see that Beast Boy, Starfire, and Raven. Um, I think Robin has his dream at this point, where he has his dream of his his superhero movie. Well, I think this was what uh, didn't that uh, this was when he was already like sad that he that he was being told he was never gonna get his own movie. Right, and then they tried cheering him up. Right, I think he has the dream of his movie before they try to cheer him up, and I think that's why he's upset that they try the, to cheer him up. Oh, with the superhero song? Yeah. Uh, I think I could have sworn it was after when when I she's think, when um, she... because I think that they sleep. He wakes up, uh, from the dream hype, and then they oh no, yes, bring yes, because in. he tried convincing uh, Jade Wilson that he that he wanted his own superhero movie and it was going to be with special effects. Everything's gonna be filled yeah, with special effects. Yeah, that was from the dream. That was from the. She had already had that dream. Which, by the way, guys, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna let you know right now. I'm gonna have to look up my. Uh, Cause I have the soundtrack. I <laughs> I, I down. I downloaded the soundtrack today. Oh wait, the soundtrack should be able to tell some sort of order, shouldn't it? Yeah, because with the soundtrack, yeah, superhero. It was. It's the superhero movie. My superhero movie is yes, the second exactly, song. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what ends up happening is, um, he has this entire elaborate dream in which he has special effects and 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 like almost the CGI on his face. You they show him in the motion capture suit in animation. Yes. They show him in the motion capture suit with a CGI cape. Oh, doesn't he? Oh, he went through like every single famous Batman cover. You see him doing like Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. So cool. You see him do the title treatment for Guardians of the Galaxy. The title treatment for Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man. You see Robin's a uh, Robin superhero movie volume like six and that. Real good. Was stuff. great. He was making fun of everything. Now, I just want to let you guys know real quick that this movie, and I'm gonna say it's a musical. <laughs> well, it's, an, why, it's an animated. The movie. reason I why say I say the reason why I say well, most animated movies are musicals. Yeah, they've always been that way. There's always been you know little numbers, but this actually had five songs: "Go," "My Superhero Movie," "Upbeat," "Inspirational Song About Life," the best song of this movie, it, "Crystals," which was just. Uh, like a beat, like electronic mu- uh, music that they're EDM, playing. Yeah. yeah, like EDM and shenanigans. So there's five songs that get broken out into it. Into okay, and, song the, rest and of, dance. the rest of them are like scores? The rest of them are scores or okay. remixes. Like they have, th- there's like three different goes on here. There's the battle go, so I guess it's just the score. Like the, the yeah, battle song yeah, that they sung yeah. at the end when they're fighting Slade. Right. And then Little Yachty's version of the Go song. Right. So other I also know the battle one, it might be the only one with the, with the uh, voice actors' voices on it. I don't think that the Little Yachty one has the voice actor. It's no, just no, no, no. It's, it's a Go. The very the opening song is available on here. And then the the Go battle remix. And yeah, it's all Greg, Sipis, Scott Yeah, Manville, that's the guy who plays. Um, yeah, Carrie those, Payton those, or whatever. Those are the voice actors for the for the team. Yeah, they can sing. Yeah, they can. They can really sing. Um, 
they uh, they bring Robin into the living room. They have a movie to show him, and they show him what I think is a very sweet movie that they created about Robin um, with like felt, or remember they just found it on WV, like the <laughs> Fantastic Four movies or the Captain America one. Did you remember what they taped over? Uh, Injustice. Young Justice. Young Justice yeah, season three. over Young Justice, which it, uh, that's a point of contention as well because a lot of people say, like, how did we get no no, no new Young Justice season? Well, that, but then you get that Teen was Titans the thing Go. Is they canceled Spectacular Spider-Man and Young Justice for Teen Titans Go. Which broke a lot of people's hearts. Uh, yeah, but especially Spectacular Spider-Man. You're really going to cancel Spectacular <laughs> Spider-Man? It had a good theme song. It had a great theme song. And it was, it was very comic accurate. But I digress. Yeah, so they try to cheer up. Before they even get to, um, like, before they get to the end of the movie, which they think is yeah, the it was best really, part. Yeah, it was literally, like, just, like, the first two seconds. Like, they were just narrating. And it was kind of, like, a slap. It was, like, it was like backhanded compliments, really. Yeah. But it was cute. It's friends. That's what friends do. We try and cheer each other up. They legit try to cheer him up and make a movie about him. But he doesn't want anything to do with it. And Cyborg uh, postulates that maybe what he really, truly needs is an upbeat, inspirational song about life. Which then we get... We, Michael then we, Bolton. Yeah, then we then get the song titled Upbeat Inspirational Song About Life in which they just sing like this 80s synth like track that just had a, had a, with a, happiness. Had a saxophone solo. You had, like, they wrote a rainbow and there's a there's a tiger uh, uh, all white tiger playing saxophone it gets out of control. At one point, they run over the tiger by accident. <laughs> like, I think his dad's the cops. And I, think his, said, dad's I, think, a I cop. think his dad's a cop. And then they run away. They just leave the body there. <laughs> what does that even have to do with know, anything? But it was me. a laugh out moment for me. It was a laugh out moment because it's like his, his dad's a cop. We gotta get out of here. Oh my god, it was ridiculous. But then um, uh, that whole thing is worth it. I can't even describe how just ridiculous that segment is. But it hits the point of ridiculous where it gets funny, and, and I I completely. You know the it. thing? If you've seen Teen Titans Go and you like at least maybe one episode of Teen Titans Go, then you'll like this show. I've seen enough to say that this music, this random music thing, is a thing. They do oh, no, no, definitely. You showed listen for everything. You showed me the episode like the night begins to shine, and yeah. that was the whole show was the whole episode was just the a, same a song. Song, a song, and it was a a synth pops '80s sounding song, like which is where the Titans come from. They come from the '80s, you know. The Teen Titans are from the '80s, uh, or the the so, most po- the most um popular incarnation of them is. So they they write they're right there. And another thing that I liked about this movie when, when it comes to jokes is, are we going to talk about the fact that the Teen Titans basically killed? The Waynes? Oh, we're going to get there. Yeah, we're definitely going to get there. <laughs> oh my because what ends up happening is once he gets through his upbeat inspirational song about life, he realizes that with a can-do attitude, you can get a film. So they walk onto the set of the Warner Brothers Studios, and they're denied entry from there from the same person who denied them entry from the uh, movie. Uh, you're not on the list. Because they're not on the list. Um, then we that's when we get the most shocking cameo of all time. This man, it, he's going to... He's going, when he goes... We are going to remember him as the only person to do a cameo in two comic book properties. Randomly, nope. on our screen, sweeping in the background, we see a spry Stan Lee. Stan he Lee, wants in, you animated, to notice him. in animated form, starts to sweep, uh, you know, kind of just in the background and not trying to bug anybody, but all of a sudden just basically uh, is in the middle of the shot, moves everyone out of the way. And he's like, hey, everybody, I'm Stan Lee. And then uh, he, gets a, he gets a cell phone call, and he's like, what? Wait. What do you mean? I'm where? Yeah, wrong what studio. No, that it was. It was hilarious. And then he comes back later. He's like, I don't care, Excelsior. Yeah, it's hilarious, bro. And it's really Stan Lee. I was really surprised that he was in this film. Um, but it, it, like I said, it, they would just kept rewarding me and rewarding me for staying. It was, it was hilarious. Um, but you get Robin and he brings the Titans because they use another portal, so they get get through. Um, and sh- they meet Jade Wilson. Jade Wilson is filming uh, BBS too. Seemingly, but I remember Superman too, um, and that's where you get the mother's name, father's name stuff. Which is weird because Jimmy Kimmel plays the voice of Batman. Oh, that's kind of odd. That's weird. Yeah, um, they ask about the movie being made, and he does this whole song and dance thing about how cool his movie could be, and she's like, "Oh yeah, no, we're not gonna do that." <laughs> and she says that uh, they would, the odds of them making a movie about the Teen Titans would only increase if every single superhero on the face of the earth were to disappear. Because that's how important they are. They are only important if everybody else was gone. So uh, Robin thinks, oh, that's a great idea. We'll just get rid of every <laughs> single hero. But getting rid of them now, you know, a superpowered Superman, a superpowered uh, Wonder Woman, 
all that kind of stuff. Getting rid of them now seems almost impossible with all their powers. Uh, but they come up with the brilliant idea to use big wheel trans uh, time travel devices with the best reference I have ever. Not the best, the best use of that reference ever. Back to the Future. They play the Back to the you Future. You see theme. these five tricycles just pop up out of nowhere. The way you see. The, the 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 DeLorean, but you get Alan Silvestri's original score. That was hilarious. It's so, it's so funny. And then when they come back, it's basically Back to the Future 2 with Biff's future. Yeah. Uh, they they are able to go back in time and um, try to do their best to prevent origins of other heroes, especially like ones that we know. Like they Batman stop Superman. Krypton from blowing up. Yeah, they stop Krypton from blowing up. They stop the Waynes from going down Crime Alley by sending them down like Happy Alley. They, they took uh, Wonder Woman's lasso away from her, and they threw a uh, plastic can uh, <gasps> oh holder god. and strangled yes. Aquaman. Oh my Aquababy? god! They threw the plastic from from a six pack can into the sea, and you just like and he's just choking. And he, they, they no, I think they put it around his neck and they throw him into the water. Yeah, like yo, they basically killed Aquaman. So it was terrible. But that, so they come into the future where there's no heroes and basically it's ending. The world is ending, and they realize, ah, we have to go and make them all heroes again. So they go, and a lot of these heroes are born in tragedy. So some of it's kind of lighthearted. The idea that you know, well, uh, Krypton's gonna go anyway. So they 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 tra- They use the crystals to trash Krypton. Uh, they send the Waynes down. Down crime alley, and they make sure that Martha oh, doesn't forget her God, pearls. Listen, oh man, that was great because Starfire just literally puts pearls on her and just runs and her push, through and pushes her down the down the. Uh, <laughs> oh, which man. is a really funny that's take. Dark on that. though, it's, it's so funny though because it, that that's basically the Teen Titans made Batman. And you know, we joke all the time about how often they show that origin, so it's funny that they finally got to play with it. They finally got to make a joke about it. Um, so yeah, they fix everybody. They fix everybody back. Uh, how they were. I like the little streamers that they had that came out of the <laughs> that came out of the big wheel tires and stuff. But so. oh no, the best was you know how like in the original Back to the Future you have to go to eighty miles an hour to get to get there. They have to up their cool factor. Oh yeah, the so rad, the whole time the rad right? the, the rad, rad meter factor, yeah the, the rad, rad factor. Like so the whole time they're just doing like they're they're jumping off ramps doing and they're grinding and doing kick yeah. flips and you just see the machine going rad. Really funny. Really really rad and it just keeps going till they go back in time. It's just great. It works we for see, me. It works. We see Slade arrive at Wayne Tech and he grabs Slade. Yeah, he uses the crystal to you know use some power and stuff like that and all of a sudden the Teen Titans come back to stop him this time. They're a little bit smarter. This time, uh, they're not looking behind themselves. And at one point, Slade says that Robin dropped something on his shirt, and he probably should look down. And Robin says, I don't even have a shirt. It's, That's funny because I'm not wearing it. It cuts to him shirtless. It's so funny. <laughs> um, and so you get you get them go on, and, and you know they put, up, they put up a fight, and they're able to get the crystal away from Slade and lock it away into Teen Titans Vault. And Robin is there with Slade and they are set to do battle and Slade basically tells Robin like, hey, you might as well let me go because all villains let their, their I mean, all heroes let their villains go. That's how we continue this thing. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? That archetype of just like, you can't arrest me to, or kill me because like, then the fight To me, this over. was just another Lego Batman Lego movie and to, if anything, it had a lot, it had either a lot, the same amount or a little bit more re- Easter eggs and references and making fun in tropes like the like the Lego movie makes fun of the one and prophecies and all that you know yeah. uh, Lego Batman goes after Batman's psyche you yeah. know how alone is this man truly is now this movie is just really just attacking every single comic book movie's tropes yeah that's all it really is that when you go when you go to Teen Titans go to the movies expect to go to see a movie making fun of comic book movies in ways that Deadpool hasn't and we've gotten so many that they serve to. Be, there is time to decompress and play with the genre a little bit. Like and all these commentaries you get like, that you get, like you know, uh, I need a catchphrase. You know, all superheroes have a catchphrase and all of this. Or like, a villain or all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. Like maybe you guys need a super villain. You know, then you would be real heroes and all that. And like, they even ask Green Lantern if he got a movie. He says, "Yeah, I kind of got one." But we don't, but like we to don't talk, talk about, about it. it. So that's kind of funny. Uh, uh, Robin lets Slade go, and the next day uh, they get an invitation to come to Hollywood. The Titans do. They're on the list, and they she wants to make a movie about them because they had a fight with Slade, and everyone knows about it. It was all over the news and stuff. And then here's where we get into where what I talk about uh, the childlike humor that doesn't reach me and that goes over my head, like 
the the bathroom joke. Like, there's a joke where all the members of Teen Titans, except for Robin, individually, one after the other, use a set a bathroom on their set. I actually have poop joke. Right yeah, like, and, like so it's an exactly actual, it's a legit actual poop joke. And you see, like, Cyborg's like, oh, oh, I'm in here, I'm in the bathroom. Oh, that's not a real bathroom. And then, yeah, you and see then Raven's in there. Then Beast Boy's in there. And then, the, then finally you see Raven in it, a total about- out of character for me that... It made me kind of roll my eyes where you see Raven come out the bathroom. She's like, "Woo, do not go in there and all they that. keep talking about taking the poops and stuff. Yeah, yeah like, you know, like some of those jokes, yeah, it didn't land for me. But basically, Robin is given a tour of the premises and he's being told that the, that uh, they need to be on their best behavior. Uh, instead, the rest of the Teen Titans, Raven, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Cyborg decide to play some shenanigans. Uh, OD shenanigans, really funny shenanigans. They do a bunch of funny stuff, but one of the funny things that they do is they realize that a lot of the food is being held in one of the studios, and that studio is seemingly being guarded by Superman. So they call Superman up <laughs> as Lois Lane and tell him to go get her, basically to go you know, save her, even referencing Gene Hackman and his uh, real estate scam from <laughs> Superman, I think, two? One. Was it one? The first Superman. I yeah, feel like Superman and, and, and Lex don't even look at each other in Superman 1. It's weird that uh, it was all. It wasn't all the way till the end. It was literally. I remember it was at the end, and uh, he breaks into his house. Yeah. And he was looking for the the detonator for the bombs that was going off, and he puts it in a lead toolbox. Right. And, and he's like, "Oh, I can't it. see through lead, so you must have known that." And when he opens up the tool chest, it's a, it's kryptonite. a kryptonite chain. Yeah. He puts the chain around. And puts him, him in the water. And he falls into water. That's the last time you I see the monster. I'll double check. It was. There, it was literally. It was. I remember. I remember because the second Superman, which is my favorite of them, was with Zod. Yes, definitely. But the first Superman, Lex Luthor. It. it, it you. They have like five minutes together on screen, and then that's it. And then uh, Superman goes back in time, saves Lois Lane from dying, and then breaks into Lex Luthor's house, picks them up, and drops them into the prison. Like, he literally uh, holds him and his his partner in his hand. That's what they say. They say, like, uh, I would, they put you underneath the prison, all that kind of stuff like that. It's yeah. Like they really did it. Um, and he's like, who is this? And he pulls off the wig. I am Lex Luthor, the but greatest watch, criminal mind ever. Watching how fast he flew to go save uh, Lois was pretty funny. Oh, it was like, what? Okay, guys, if you can, if you haven't seen this movie yet and you're still here listening to us, try and imagine... Nicholas Cage from either Snake Eyes or The Wicker Man having a conversation about Lois Lane. It's like, okay, honey bunny. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Lois, I gotta save you now. It's, it's, it's really important. And it's, it's oh, it's, it, it was really funny. They get into, they get great. inside uh, catering. They get to eat a bunch of stuff, and we find out that they are building a doomsday device. Oh, but it, not not just a doomsday. It's like a what a direct. All of yeah. operation. It's it's an acronym for Netflix. Basically, it's a streaming service. They say it's a streaming service. So it's it's like it's like its own commentary for the DC's new streaming service coming exactly. out. Exactly. So uh, when they they see a machine built being built by like Shazam and a couple others, it's called the Doomsday Device. Um, they get in trouble for you know doing all their shenanigans, and they also. Uh, get in trouble because they try to, you know, unveil that this doomsday device is shenanigans, the secret. Shenanigans, shenanigans. <laughs> We're gonna get into shenanigans. T- the music of this movie is actually really good. They try to, un- they try to unveil that this doomsday device is actually malicious. That Jade is up to no good, and Jade's like, no, this is a streaming device. It's gonna get your the, your movie everywhere. We were gonna be the f- you were, the Teen Titans movie was supposed to be the first one on the new streaming site and all that. Yep. So she makes Robin feel incredibly guilty and tells Robin that he needs to drop the rest of the Teen Titans if he wants to make this movie. Um, something that Robin kind of accepts, um, and everyone seems a little bit upset, uh, sad and upset. But Starfire broke my heart because she still wishes him good luck. She yeah. goes over to him and she goes, I, "I, you are the friend, Robin, and yes, I wish you the you luck. You are the friend, or whatever." She's like, "You know, I, I, this, if this is what makes you happy, I hope that you get exactly." You know what? what she you was want. always like that in the two thousand three team. Well, those are she was they, always they, supportive. Boom, Dick and Starfire, those are they, they. They they love this man. Those two always, uh, and, always, and the, and the directors and writers knew, and yeah. they they really did good. So but they, my only problem, uh, uh, I always have problems with at least at least one problem in one movie always, and my only problem was the mindless zombie of DC characters. Uh, they oh the eventual third act. Yeah, in that third act, I kind of wanted that to be the movie. The and they brushed fight. it, and they, yeah, and they brushed it off so quickly that I just. I don't know. I felt it's not that I felt robbed and cheated. It's just it was just like you gave me you kind of gave me this cool concept. Of, it was like what? Justice. It was like Young Justice first the first Justice League movie. But have you seen uh, The Incredibles two? No, I haven't seen Incredibles two. Very yet. very similar plot. Really? Yeah. And when you consider that and what you just said that the last Teen Titans one of the last Teen Titan movies 
was the same thing of them. We're gonna brainwash. Yeah, we're gonna the brainwash the Justice the... League and have the Teen Titans have to f- have the Young Justice team have to fight them. Oh, yeah. Teen Titans. I think by doing this here, they they can still tell them that they're jokes because they did they didn't they don't defeat the Justice League in this. No, they, they only defeat Slade. They don't defeat anybody. Yeah, they just they just outrun them. Yeah, that's true. Um, we but, but real quick, I also want to mention that they gave Superman a Kryptonite party. Which was hilarious. <laughs> they decided to give him a like they 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 they, they, they like they take her tonight, they, they put cocktail. it in a blender. They take her tonight, they put it in a blender, they take that that elixir, <laughs> pour it in a spray bottle, and then spray that in Superman's <laughs> face. It's hilarious. It's torture they, for the man, and, but it's hilarious. And they literally said, Kryptonite party! Yeah, and they started playing music and stuff like that. Like, yo, it's so, so messed up. Oh my god, it's so good. Um so Starfire wishes them good luck, and it's been said that the Titans don't know what to do without Robin. It's also been said that Robin has saved them, you know, made them realize their true potential. So without them, seeming they're not going to do anything. Uh, but Robin's continuing to make this movie, which is actually getting... it was sad because when they break up, you actually hear like, "Oh, I'm going to go back to eating dumpster trash," and Raven's like, "I'm going to go back to taking over the world," and yeah, and um, Cyborg's like, like, "I'm, I'm going to go a... back to playing football," and I'm going to end up being on uh, Dancing with the Stars. That was his. Oh thing. my god, that was great. That was that was funny. He's like, "Well, you're going to be a football player. It's not as and cool then, as it sounds. Uh, injuries, knee injuries, reality and shows." <laughs> and this whole time I'm thinking, I was like, "Dude, you are a machine. Literally a machine." Yeah, you would be the perfect quarterback. No one will even be able to tackle you. But it was just it was heartbreaking to know that Beast Boy came from like you know the homelessness. Raven was had a manifest destiny she didn't want. It also plays with the whole. Um, Stronger together idea. Yes. That a lot of these teams yes. play with. Which is that, yeah, these pieces may not look like much on their own, but you put them together and you get and a team. And this isn't the the first time that there has been a breakup Teen Titans. I remember there was, I remember at least one episode from the original Teen Titans show that there was an uncertainty of, we can't do this. I think it was after the whole, like, had to be like a couple episodes after the whole Tara Terrorism? thing with Slade, yeah. where Slade actually has them, like, we don't know what to do. Because I remember there was an episode where they went in, into the future. Uh-huh. And Night Robin was Nightwing, and Beast Boy was was like his doing his own thing. But the Teen Titans were no more. Right. So I remember that they they bat like they worked with those kinds of elements, and this did it really well. Yeah, because I got to see. In yeah. my eyes, these are not teen, quote unquote, teen of the Titans. They're they're like eight nine years Kids, old. Yeah. You know, they're, they're Kid Titans. I- even even if they are twelve thirteen, they're still immature. In tween my head. Titans. They yeah, exactly. Gone. They're they're tween Titans. <laughs> tween so titans. watching like, just imagine you when you're like your group of friends at 10 years old all breaking up and never hanging out again. You know, the summer's over, everyone's moving away. And what you thought of that of that friendship, when you had that friendship at 10, 8, or whatever, you guys were unstoppable because you guys yeah. were all parts of the same machine and you guys all had the same goal. And that's what the goal changes here when Robin wants a movie. The guys want a movie too, but they don't want it as much as he does. And they see they how much care for They don't even care for the movie. Like I said, Starfire only... It, it, the only reason why she doesn't harbor anger towards Robin is because she knew from the get this is what he wanted and he would probably do some questionable things to get it and that's what leaves him by himself with Jade Wilson uh, where he's doing the final scene for his blockbuster movie where he opens Titan's Tower's door and pulls out the secret rock that they had locked away and a light falls on him and knocks him out and when he wakes up uh, they he does it again and it does open up and it is revealed that Slade Wilson hold, I mean Jade Wilson hold on is Slade Wilson in disguise. Slade! Which, to me, this was actually one of my most, like, heartfelt, teary moments, the destruction of the Titans Towers. Yeah. Not only did it hit me... And Robin by himself doing... Not only did it hit me in the nostalgia factors, but just the way, like, the way they did the destruction of it. I mean, when when I was sitting in theaters, I was making a Deadpool 2 joke. I was singing The Ashes, song by Celine Dion. Yeah. but, But still, looking back on it, it was Robin's by himself... He, all he ever wanted was a movie. He got he was so blinded by the fact that he wanted his own movie. He was tricked into yeah. destroying his own home and being tr- forced to feel extremely foolish for for his for what he did to his friends. To where he apologizes, yeah, and <laughs> which so, is so funny because he 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 calls them. I think it was a voicemail. He leaves a message along along like, "Listen, guys, I know you guys may not be wanting to hear from me right now, but." You Come know, to find out that they were here, they were there when they when he when they missed a call. They were like there off screen listening. You hear the they sniffles. Showed, they showed right up 
which is another really, really like I'm glad I didn't go through a whole big ho hum about. Oh no, yeah, we didn't, we didn't need that because most comic book team movies, there's always that one scene where like you don't know if the team is gonna be together after this, but obviously they're gonna be together. But you don't, you know, they want you to make it seem like you don't know that they're gonna be together. Like what's going on? Like I always go back to Guardians, but they're one of the best teams to do. Like in the first Guardians, after after um Drax calls down Ronan and yeah, they broke up. You know, they're, 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 they're like. You know, no one knows what they're going to do. And then they stand again together. And I like that this movie didn't, like, take at least 20 minutes on this. You know, he he messed up. He got his own scene. Now the place is blown up. He asked his friends for help. They came back. Yep. And they forgave him like nothing. And it's also kind of a little bit of a, you know, something we we probably learn as people in this world. That this idea that, you know, people are going to make mistakes. People are going to do stupid things. People are going to be tricked. Cyborg was one of the... Big ones to like. Listen, man. We knew you wanted this. You know, we got your back. You know, like we. Yeah. You know, we're sorry. We messed. Like they were at the end. They were sorry. They messed up the opportunity for him. And that's the true heart of this. Whereas I watch Justice League, and everyone seems like they want to kill each other. And the only reason why they're not killing each other is because they have to fight. And that was my problem with the first Avengers. I mean, it took me. It took me years to go back and appreciate the first Avengers. But my initial initial viewing of the first Avengers, I felt cheated that first forty five minutes. Cause it, it, was, it, was, it was all this, it was all this politic talk, and then it was them fighting throughout the whole movie, and then we finally get the last twenty minutes, the yeah. battle in New York, and then I'm just like, well, I mean, okay, now I see it's important. Right, now right. I see it's important, but when I was then, you know, I didn't know about this whole universe that was going to be built around this. Right. So I'm you're just wondering ex- why why you only got half of a. A team uh, uh, yeah, it's just like, okay, I didn't want the first 45 that minutes. That actually fight. probably speaks to why you like Age of Ultron so much. Yeah, because they were actually a team there. Nah, we'll talk about that another day. Another but, podcast <laughs> another day. But a better, let's talk about a better movie. <laughs> uh, Stop it. Uh, so Slade, his entire thing was that he was going to keep all the superheroes busy by giving them superhero movies. And now that which he has a, everything really, that he needs. But, which is a really Im- intelligent like plan. Yeah. That's a really good plan. Especially which how you see how everyone gets caught up in, in this universe with superhero movies. Um, so now that he has the, the crystal that he stole from, from the, um, Wayne Tower or whatever, he's going to use it to power the Doomsday device. Yeah, because he had to steal, uh, one major, that didn't crystal. he say he had to steal one major MacGuffin from every yeah, city? Yeah, And so he was able, and he was able to do that because, um, people were too distracted. And so now that he's able to have this machine, he's going to use it to control all the heroes and send them after the Teen Titans. Which is a real, I thought was a brilliant scene. Even the even the animation, like it went completely red background, black drawing. Their eyes were all white, and it, like that, it looked, yeah, it looked domineering. We get that cool scene of Batman seemingly being unstoppable, where they keep destroying his vehicle. Oh he, my god! He ends up like on skates and on a scooter, and then at one point he seems to be like, <laughs> he's on Alfred. His, yeah, riding Alfred. Uh, that it's was like really you can't good. stop the Batman. That's when you run over uh, Stanley, and he says Excelsior, and you also run over the Atom. There's a bunch of that stuff happening Poor there. Poor Atom. But um, Robin goes right after Slade, and eventually Robin uh, Slade uses his new power to control Robin and send Robin after the Titans. And he's about to give him the death blow, seemingly from his bow staff, before they're able to pull out a tablet and show him the rest of the movie. Oh, he's again, like, yeah, watch the movie, just watch like, the movie. Again, another like. Really, it's silly, but another really heartfelt moment. But uh, you know what? You know what? They went out their way to make a movie for their best friend. I mean, because they knew he wanted it so bad. It's amazing. And and they they were like really talking him up through the whole movie. Robin found us, and he was and he's the him, best leader. We were be. nobody without him. He like, had sweet karate moves. <laughs> yeah, like like they. Do you know what I liked about this team? About what I like about Teen Titans Go? This is a real family oriented c- cartoon. Yeah. Like uh, yes, Teen Titans was a very. I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Like Teen Titans didn't have family elements and family, but I think this Teen Titans Go really does more of like the friend teamwork. Like at the end of the day, they're still friends. They're still kids. They well, they live on their own with no adults and no responsibility. That's what makes them unique. You know, Grayson's parents are both dead. Starfire's parents, if they're not dead, they're on another planet. Cyborg only has a dad, and his relationship with his dad has always been tenuous. Same thing with Beast Boy. So. You know, and they they Raven really is, are yeah. they are each other's family. They really are each other's family because yeah, that, they don't spend brothers time and sisters. In their with eyes, they're else. all brothers and sisters. So of course, you know, if my sister wants a movie and I mess up the movie, I'm gonna feel bad and try and make her her own movie. You know, you know like, family's about encouragement. It's about support. It's about love. Exactly. It's about forgiveness and this, and all those this Teen Titans, they support the hell out of each other, and they love each other and they forgive each other. They joke on each other, yeah, but <laughs> it gets they, back to where it's at. 
And but poor cyborg, that man is not a boombox. You guys got to stop treating him like a yeah. Boom every box. time they do, uh, they don't know who he is, and then he puts out his, 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 his stuff. Robin comes to his senses. Initially, I was a little bit upset that he came so quick, but then I was like, this whole movie is literally going by as a whirlwind. Like this thing. No, we were at the last so like five fast. minutes at that point. Yeah, it's going by so fast, and they have to be able to get you know get off. Um, you know, on the like stop. I said, I just look at it as a made-for-TV movie. This is something that you would see, like, remember how Cartoon Network back in the day, all of our favorite shows used to have these hour and a half movies during holiday seasons. Ed and Eddie had, like, a whole Christmas movie. Like, the Powerpuff Girls had had a movie. Like, that's what I see it as. I see it as these, like, made-for-TV movies where you do have to follow the show to understand some of these jokes. So a lot of the jokes were probably callbacks to the episodes, and I'm just sitting there, I even looked over, I even leaned to you, and I'm like, this is probably an episode I would have to get, and I'd have to watch to get. Yeah. But but I could say that a lot of it is just surface level humor. A lot of it that you see is just awesome. Like, I, by the time this happens, and everyone's been talking so much crap about them, and all this stuff with the brainwashing, and all this stuff about you're never going to get a movie, and you guys are juvenile, and you guys are silly... When it gets to this third act, and Robin comes to his senses and rallies up the team, and they play that battle remix, and they're they're ra- they're doing the same silly Go stuff team times, they were doing in the beginning. Times. I Go said in the beginning times. when I first heard the song that I thought it had a lot of heart to it because to me it felt like they were pumping each other up. In this instance, that's exactly what they're doing because they are now realizing that they're the only yeah, ones. And that it's can even pump battle remix where the score is even more like Hans epic. Zimmer, the like, dun, 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 dun. like yeah, definitely more epic. epic. And they're all rapping. They're all you know showing off their their skills, and they're able to defeat Mega. Zord Slade, uh, Slade gets a Megazord and stuff like that, and they're able to be defeated by him. And just with teamwork, just with believing in each other, and it sounds so cliche and corny, but man, from a from a studio that's had so much hard time finding the heart in their franchise, this is where it's it. This is where it is. But you know, that's always been DC's problem. Their animation is astounding. How can they, even even something like Teen Titans Go that's like an hour and twenty seven minutes. Even they can pull out a coherent story better than like Batman versus Superman and Justice League. I don't understand. How is it that DC's animation teams will always be on point? Will always be on point, but they cannot do nothing with their live action. I don't know. I I just maybe they think that the animation is kind of amateur hour, so they don't they don't they don't hover over those I, I those creatives. Choose, I, I want to choose to go on the playing the devil's advocate side. I I think that they know since they have animation, there is no limitation to the creativeness that they can go. So they find they, so they're handcuffed by live action. Probably they should get more creative then, because I feel like I feel like they're not in the corner that they seem they, to be. I, in. I, I'm I'm just I, there's I'm making excuses, but I have <laughs> there's. I yeah. can't wrap my mind around how you can make Justice League vs. Teen Titans an amazing, interesting animated movie, but Justice League, something we've been waiting forever for, is too damn dark. Well, and I don't thing- mean dark in tone. I mean dark in lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, even the acting, everybody seemed like they just weren't having fun. Jason Moway looks so uninterested. Ben Affleck looks so uninterested. Yeah, it's crazy. And like I said, I've always wanted a Robin, and I'm being told that the universe they set up does not cannot fit a Robin and yet I've had Robin in here and I've had Robin in Lego Batman. No, but they cheated us by by giving us a dead Robin suit in Batman's in Batman's cave. Almost telling us that there is no room for a Robin in the Yeah, story. that's that's basically saying, listen, I know that you guys want Robin, but we're not gonna do Robin, but we're gonna give you Robin's suit that says ha 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 so you know that Jason Todd was killed. So now you're giving me an Easter egg to a movie that I would much rather watch. Yeah. I much rather watch Under the Red Hood live action than Batman vs Superman again. But those titles, when you think of some of the best titles in DC, the best comics to adapt, they're all very traumatic. I felt like taking this approach and just trying to do a tangential, lighthearted uh, thing. Like, I, I, this is the chaser to the alcohol they've been trying to serve me this entire time. That's been making me kind of throw up. So <laughs> I like that they gave me something to, to to swallow down the DC lore with because it, the lot of the last couple of drinks have been pretty rough. That they've been giving oh, yeah, well, well, it, was, it was it was Justice League, and then before that was Batman vs. Superman. So, and, and you got Suicide Squad up there. Yeah, Suicide Woman Squad, good. Man of Steel. I mean, Wonder Woman was the only one that really did anything good. I mean, and, even Green Lantern almost destroyed say, the, the chances of a franchise And happening. you know what you say? Uh, Man of Steel is the Superman movie for people who don't like Superman. So. Man of Steel definitely is the Superman movie for people that don't like Superman, because I like Man of Steel, but I digress. But even though they're not made of steel, they're able to defeat the steel-clad uh, Slade in his Megazord. Um, another trope, right? And the big, the big robot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 
I thank God that they didn't do like the blue beam from into space thing. Yeah. I would I would have. I think I would have like had to like roll my eyes at that one. Yeah, the sky beam is a little bit the, more yeah, used. Then it's 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 just at this point, what are we even making fun of? Everyone has made fun of it yeah. because everyone has done it. Avengers have done it. Uh, Fantastic Four has done it. Suicide, you know, Squad. Uh, Suicide Squad has yeah. done it. You know, they all do that blue portal to space. I can't stand see, even if you're making fun of it. I can't stand seeing blue portals to space. But every every bat every superhero movie does have a CGI schlock fest, and they <laughs> made fun of this CGI schlock fest. And considering that it was animation, they did have to do some pretty cool animation shots. No, uh, I I, I said it in scenes. my review in my original review of this on uh, Comic Book Clicks Instagram. You can check that out in the link below at Comic Book Click. We uh I said that the animation actually captured me. It was gorgeous. The dynamic is exciting. It's cool even. If, like it, they blended, they blended like regular animation and and manga style. Like like you know you get the big eyes and the big cheeks, but you get like the the very restrained color palettes. Like you you could see how everything and was also just really deep uh deep lines. You know, oh, no, you the, the, yeah, lines. the line work was really good. Uh, but it's very similar to how you know the show's uh, animation style, which isn't bad. It's just when people first saw that image of their childlike you know appearances, they they just kind of. You know, shrug their shoulders about the whole thing. But once Slade is gone, um, Robin, you know, like I said, he comes to his senses. Everyone everyone is there to congratulate the Titans now. Now all the heroes are there. Oh, yeah, everyone's doing that. One of those little hip-hip hip parades stuff that yep. you see at, like, the end of every movie. And Rob and Robin's in the middle. He's like, I learned something today. He does the whole, like, stand from uh, South, South Park. Park. Oh, yeah. I learned something today, you know. I learned to be myself. And, I, and then Starfire goes... But Robin, this is not the movie. This is not, you know, this is not the the, the time. To oh do my this. God! The entire like, Robin is trying to just like, have Robin's one of those like, little. I, I learned something. Have a, yeah, Robin is like, I just want to tell them the moral of the credits, story. Credit, credit, credit! I forgot credits, they were chanting for credits. credits. They were chanting. They were chanting for credits. And then credits. you see the credits roll on the side while Robin's trying to talk, and then oh my God! And then me and George yeah. saw this with GT. And we we wa- we watched it in a crowd full of kids with their mothers. Yeah. This had to be the best way to end the movie ever. He's like, "Wait, parent, par- Hey, ask your kid, ask your parents about where babies are come from." Yeah. Uh, right before the credits cut, Robin jumps to the screen and goes, "Real quick, kids, ask your parents where babies come from." And, and then, it, and then it, it, and then it, and then it ends. And I'm just sitting there in all, like, surrounded just by by glee and happiness and laughter. Yeah, because we I'm saw just, it with kids, so you could. It was a, it was an, ex- it was a good movie theater experience because if. I think if me and you saw it with like adult. an adult male audience, there would be like a dry eye in the house. But because it was we were with kids, there were kids laughing. Yeah, you generally it. hear a lot of kids doing their little kid giggles, and that made me feel good because look, if the kids can enjoy it, then I can enjoy it. And then we see the challengers of the unknown floating through space. Four challengers of the unknown. <laughs> but as we as we're sitting there looking at the challengers of the unknown, and we're like, wow, what a, what a good end joke. Uh, we start to see the distorted, uh, distorted screen telling the viewers oh. that they found their way dro- back. I heard that they dropped this at San Diego Comic Con. Actually, this one little like five second clip. I heard they dropped it at Comic Con. It's amazing. Uh, turns out that the Teen Titans from the two thousand and three series are not not only know that they're off air, right? They they know that they they've been gone, quote unquote. Yeah. But they're coming back. They just, yeah, they, like the the camera was literally on the ground, sca- staticky like any movie that you see where like the found footage, you yeah. know, like you see their legs and all you see is you hear Scott uh, uh Mensville like, "Oh, we did it. We found the way back, Titans and you know, and all that." And then, oh man. So, uh how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the news of the 2003 Titans and do you think there's room for both Titans? Uh, is is this town big enough for the both of them? I don't think so. That's interesting. I, I, I don't I love the original Teen Titans and I don't have enough love for Go to want Go to be a parent, you know, but there's not gonna be enough room. I, I, I don't know if these kids are going to buy into the old Teen Titans. Especially wow, so you're saying that that one might be the one that hurts? Well, think think of it. I'm I'm looking at, at it from how I was as a kid. When I was a kid, all I wanted to watch was Courage the Cowardly Dog and Dexter's Lab and Two Stupid Dogs. And you could not get me to sit through He-Man. Johnny Quest or something? (laughs) No, Johnny Quest for some reason was an exception. I don't know why. But you couldn't get – there was at least maybe three shows that I just couldn't get into. I couldn't get into the the original cartoons of the Transformers. I couldn't get into He-Man. And I couldn't get into – oh, what what, what was that? Flintstones and uh, uh, what's the one with the, the Jetsons and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. 
I, I couldn't get into it. Like, as a kid, I would see it for two seconds, and it's just, eh, whatever. Where's where's the cartoons that appeal to what I want to see? Okay. So I feel like these car- like these cartoons now, the whole Steven Universe, uh, Amazing World of Gumball and Chowder, yeah. those big eye, big cheek, small body. like Loud. You know, yeah, the loud, <laughs> like, fast-paced editing where their hands are just flailing and flailing and flailing. Like, oh, look at me, look at me, I'm doing something, I'm doing something. Notice right. me. That whole notice me animation is what hmm. maybe six to nine year olds are gonna uh, are gonna look for. Like you could sell a thirteen year old on our Teen Titans. Yeah. Because if I was thirteen, you could sell me on your He Man, your Masters of the Universe. But kids are so used to now seeing these Steven Universe styled shows that I don't think that just on the animation alone and the very adult situation episodes that they're gonna get into it. The the Teen Titans of us were way too like actual um, comic books. Like, yeah, it was yeah, actual, actual storytelling, storytelling yeah. actual comic books, character like, you progression could, stuff like that. Like you, you, had, you can't watch any episode out of order. Like there was there was yeah, a, like you had to see a progression to, to and, and maybe and maybe it's a it's a, a cop out because you know I remember as a kid that this stuff hooked me. So why wouldn't it hook a ten year old now? But the way that that Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon and Disney Channel have been handholding. The younger generation, through the through the years, is they're so used to seeing these big cheeks, big eyed animations that they're not gonna want anything else. I can dig that. I so I have a pro and a con for them coming back. Obviously, the pro is that there is a subset of fan who this is their titans, and they get to get their titans back. Uh, as somebody who lost various great shows, I would love to see you know any of my childhood shows come back. So I feel you on that. Plus. I understood the allure for Titans, even though I wasn't a hundred percent, you know, a, a, a fan at the time. Um, my negative thing is I feel like the the hole that the two thousand and three Titans would fill seemingly would be ended up being filmed filled by Young Justice that's coming on the DC streaming service. So if you have Young Justice here, you know, to the far right, and you have Teen Titans go to the far left, the Teen T- I feel like Teen Titans is not go enough for the kids and not young justice enough for the adults and where does that sit where does that let it sit i think that there's oh no way i think the teen titans is, can definitely fit into the young justice well you world. would have to connect them but that's what i'm saying they they fit in it to have them separate almost feels like extra right like if you want to see a a, a a a drama a hard-hitting drama for young adults about comic book stuff you watch young justice if you don't want the hard hitting drama, you want the kind of jokey stuff. You watch Teen Titans Go. Yeah. Where do you? Why do you watch Teen Titans O three? You understand what I'm saying? I feel like those two shows serve both audiences that want them. Um, yeah, it so would just be like bringing back something just for fan service. It's almost they're almost a little bit of both, right? Teen that Teen Titans. Well, maybe they're going to do a movie instead of a TV show. I would like a versus movie. I would exactly, or maybe a team up movie. I don't I even would, know. I would love to see it, te- like, or maybe cameos in Young Justice. Because right now the Young Justice team, the the Teen Titans for Young Justice is Damon Wayne, right? I gotta see. I didn't even see him there. I could have. No. I didn't see Damon did, on the screen there. Did you see uh the Justice League versus Young Justice? Yes, and he's Titans on that. Man? And he's on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going Ham off Raven, that. I'm going yeah. off that 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 team because that's that the thing that's in my head right now. It's yeah. I don't for some reason, but no, the in yeah the the Young Justice TV show. Right. Right. None of them, a couple of them, none of them there were in the original Teen Titans, were they? Maybe a couple of them. Maybe Aqualad, right? In the in the in the O three Teen Titans. Oh, I'm talking oh, about the, oh, talking about no. the team. I the, think that, the OG Teen Titans team from O three that we know one, from ages. The only one was uh, Beast Boy. Was Robin, but I think that Robin is uh, Tim Drake. I don't think it's. Um, so Green. there's so there's room for. Young Justice and Teen Titan of the O three Teen Titans. If no one like like crosses over, like there's no right. Like you, what you're saying, like both is, teams can't have yeah. Uh, have that's Beast what I'm Boy. saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're saying if you split the teams up or you had them stand on opposite sides, would anyone ha- be stuck because they're on both teams? Yeah. No, not to my knowledge. They uh. So you have, I know you have Dick Grayson. Oh no, it is Dick Grayson. So it is Dick Grayson on Young Justice. So I know would, from Justice League vs. Teen Titans, Starfire is the Starfire and Beast Boy are training the new wave of no Starfire is training the new wave of Justice Leaguers, and Beast Boy is actually young. So that'd be the main problem is Dick Grayson. Yeah, but uh, you, have, you have five different Robins Beast, to choose Beast from. Beast Boy did show up on Young Justice, like you said. Um, I remember that episode. I think that was in like season two. But we'll see because if Teen Titans Go continues, it has its audience, and and I feel like the audience for Teen Titans O three 
is the audience for Young Justice, which seemingly we're getting once this DC. Yeah, and that, that's when you're now. It's like okay. Who do we have room for? Do we have room for Young Justice or do we have room for Teen Titans? Me, in my personal opinion, I've been cheated for how many years of a Young Justice season three? That's and what I'm all saying. this. I rather watch That's my. my point, I rather yeah. watch Young Justice and everything they can do now than go back and what watch Teen Titans. Or you would just watch the Teen Titans because they have a DC. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they yeah, have the yeah. DC streaming service. So why not go back during the DC streaming when the DC streaming service comes out and watch all these old Teen Titans? But to make new episodes of of an O three Teen Titans. It's it's gonna be very. I think it's gonna be jarring. Yeah. Because like you said, of the of the comic book cartoons TV show spectrum, you know, Teen Titans doesn't fall on either side. Right. And I think that, like you said, the the best choice for this is when the DC streaming service comes out. And I can also see a case of them deciding to wind down Teen Titans Go. Teen Titans Go is gonna be. Uh, they've been approved for their sixth season. They haven't. Or have? So they have. Okay. So their fifth season is going on right now. Their sixth season will go on next. Uh, uh, you know, the next year. Um, and I think that that's a pretty respectable run for that show. Six years. Yeah. That's a pretty respectable run for that show. Most cartoons don't even get to that point. So if they can get to six years. Maybe something happens. They hit a button, and, and next thing you know, you go back to from what I know from little kids, from like like a cousins that I, ha- I have cousins that have kids. I have friends that have kids. From what I know, Teen Titans Go is very popular amongst both guys and girls. So Yogi posted up a video on Facebook that was quite interesting, where it was his, he was reading a comic, and his daughter who watches Teen Titans Go. I saw the video that you talked about. Yeah, t- was watching him read the comic and noticed Beast Boy. She recognized Beast Boy from the comic. I remember his caption where he's like, I don't care how, how stupid Teen Titans Go is as long as my daughter recognizes these characters. And I mean, the, he that's has a true. point. Yeah. He has a point. If that's what it does, if that's what, you know, I knew very little about Spider-Man and the character. Everything I knew, I knew from the show, which then gave me a love for the comic. Uh, same thing with Batman. If media didn't tell me what Batman did, I wouldn't have known because I wasn't reading comic books as a, as a young age. And that's where I respect shows like this. Like, if you can, if you can do, you know, if you can be funny... And intelligent at the same time, appeal to kids and adults, then you're you're there. You got the it factor. I've I've personally found a new level of respect for Teen Titans Go because of the movie, Definitely. and it helped me find out that Teen Titans Go, as stupid as it is, and as much as it goes against my nostalgia, it still has it. It has it because it can it, it can make us laugh. Yeah, it can make the kids in the audience laugh. Yeah, it has jokes for us. There's jokes for kids. Yeah, That's definitely. It. And I think That's I think it. one of the most important things about it is that we live in a world where, realistically speaking, we're not allowed to have our cake and eat it too, right? That's what we're yes, told. We're not yes, allowed I was to just talking about that too. the other day. Um, Teen Titans Go has its cake and eats it too. And makes enough for all of us to have cake and eat it too. I get my jokes. I get my lore. I get my continuity. I get my uh, voice acting. I get... Uh, my in jokes where I'm in on the joke because I know about DC's history. You understand? Know yeah. Like I'm in on the joke. I know these jokes. No, that, that that stuff. A lot of it was funny, and there was a there was these there was little one off adult lines. I felt like put... I was inside that joke. I felt like I was inside that show, as opposed to the other movies that I see sometimes where I feel like they're talking at me. Teen Titans let me come in. They told me I was just as dysfunctional as them, and that I'm allowed to be on the team. And they shared they shared their movie with me, and because of which. I feel so much better about DC, about the the Teen Titans franchise. Teen Titans Go as a show, um, and I I do ha- like you said have a newfound respect on the on the entire show. But I also wouldn't be surprised if this was their if they're the star and they just went supernova with the movie and it's to then revert back to where they were with O three. Well, yeah, because they they did bring back the original voice cast for this new Teen Titans Go thing. So if this movie is like you know. This movie in this six seasons, like the be all end all of Teen Titans Go, then you know what? Not only did they have a good run, but I feel they had a respectable run. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because once again, it's, I'm gonna throw it to the same argument of the Muppet Babies, a pup named Scooby Doo, Tiny Toons, Animaniacs. You know, like these were shows that were based off of characters that our parents grew up loving, that now we get to love. Exactly. Because and, and look, look at Looney Tunes. Do you think I'm going to show any of my kids in the future any of the original 1950s and 60s Looney Tunes <laughs> they're cartoons until they're older? They're a little dry. Yeah. Like maybe maybe a couple of Bugs Bunny skits. You yeah. know, Rabbit Season, Duck Season, or when Bugs Bunny was trying to give Elmer Foot a haircut, or, or the, when he was sexually harassing Elmer Foot when he tried to like kiss him on the mouth. Yeah, see stuff like that. You know, like that. Me like too. You, like Bugs. Chuck, Me too. Chuck Jones and Chuck Avery. You know, they made they made a. I forgot about Chuck Avery. 
Yeah. Because uh, remember every Sunday night, 9 to 11 was the Chuck Jones show and the Chuck Avery show? Yes, I do remember that. That's crazy. Chuck Avery. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, they made cartoons that are for our parents. No, the, the, they're make, they made cartoons that were, yeah, for adults, not for our parents. Because our parents were young at that time. But they made a, adult cartoons to come into the 80s and 90s with with, with Saturday morning cartoons. And we get these kids shows. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate Teen Titans Go. I appreciate the new reboot of Powerpuff Girls. It can go against my nostalgia, but if the kids are if the kids are enjoying the comic book characters that I grew up enjoying, and they have the same exact love and respect for these comic book characters, mm-hmm. then wait till they get older to choose if they want to read up more into them. You know, I don't expect every single eight year old boy to go out and pick up an original Teen Titans comic book. Yeah. You know, I don't expect them to. I expect them to watch the cartoon movies. And I, I implore all of you guys who've obviously you've gotten to this point. Hopefully you've seen the movie already. But um, Golden Rule, just for entertainment in general and uh, just so that you can have a lot more time when you watch these kind of things, is that there is absolutely no movie that is going to be 100% for you. And even though you might feel that way about certain movies, they didn't intend that. It just happened to happy, have a happy accident. And, it, you know, the movie lined up with a lot of what you wanted. But every movie has something for you. Of course. Something. Do uh, do your due diligence. And, and if give this things movie a is chance. not... Yeah, do, give things a chance. But you can't write it off unless you've given it a chance. And I feel like Teen Titans Go, like I said again, refuses to quit on you. You watch this movie and it will, it will get a ride. No, there was no breath. Well. There was like no time to slow down. Like everything was just yo keep going and going and going. And I, I like that. I, I like the fact that I didn't have to... I'm an adult. I don't like being ha- handheld through my movies. Yeah. But these are one of those movies where I felt like maybe I should have watched a couple of episodes before <laughs> I went to see this because there are a lot of jokes that I'm just like, yeah, this I had to watch an episode to get this joke. But it also makes sense that it's that way, right? For for them, like now. Yeah, you- because now I actually want to go back and watch some Teen Titans Go episodes. I never thought in my life I would say that. And that's exact. I'm just gotta say that, that, that that's that's got to be the point. That's got to be the exact. No, that point. is that that is, that is the whole point. That hey, listen, if you're anywhere from if you were anywhere from like six to fifteen in two thousand three, and you loved our original product, just give us a chance. And I did that. <laughs> Granted, it was a free screening, so I mean, obviously, I was gonna go see it, but I probably would have paid to see it in theaters. And, and in fact, this is a movie that, if I had to give it a grade rating, I would give it an I would give it an eight out of ten because only because some of the some jokes didn't land. And I guess that's a little harsh, but I would buy this on Blu-ray. Eight out of ten, I give Justice League a seven point five out of ten. So I still I give Teen Titans. Uh, I probably movie's, give this Teen Titans an eight point five out of ten. This right now is the best DC movie in like. 10 years. Really, really good. Really, really good stuff. Like, I would I would throw the Teen Titans go to the movies up there with Lego Batman and Wonder Woman as for DC theatrical films that have knocked can it out Can only of the those exist? Is there a way we can do them? We gotta go back in time on our, on our big wheels and see if we can... Yeah, we gotta do rad films. stuff. We gotta do gotta rad, be rad stuff. We gotta do rad stuff. Any last words? Crack an egg on it! <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna crack an egg on this cast. Uh, but if you like this and the kind of things that we're doing here... All you have to do is follow Major Issues, the podcast, wherever podcasts are found. It's Podbean, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, uh, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Apple everything. Just look at this like podcast app on your Apple device if you own an Apple device. And if you don't open an Apple device, I know you know what Google is. Google Major Issues Podcast and will be the first link that pops Guys, right we even up. Have, I think we even have this on YouTube. Yeah, so oh, you oh no, to, we're everywhere. We're yeah, on you YouTube don't even as have well. To go, you don't even have to go crazy. You don't Just go, go to YouTube. Far. You don't gotta but go far. Listen I to j- us. Personally, listen. I I want to take a moment out here, and I just want to thank every single one of you that have gotten us to eleven hundred listens. Yeah, we are past eleven hundred listens. I know we on this on this show we announced when we passed um one thousand, which was astronomical. But just two episodes later, thanks to you guys, we've broken that again. So thank you guys. You so guys much. are really amazing. You are the reasons why we continue to do this. You know, we, me, me and George would just be talking to ourselves. We, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to like go through all this trouble, but you guys want to hear us. You guys love us and we love every single one of you, even if we don't know you by name. And never forget, drop an email. 
drop a message in the Facebook. You know, find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. We will communicate with you. We're we're, we're not like real celebrities. You know, <laughs> we're, yeah. We're, communicate communicate with us now and to, before we become. <laughs> I mean, now's the time to get in, right? No, now, yeah. Ask because me. if we know you now, you know, we might be able to pull you to the side when we gotta get the VIP. When we passes. go to our movie premiere, you know, understand what I'm saying? You can actually box us a brief now. You don't even have to wait because when I get famous, I might not be able to ask that question on the road. <laughs> it become a whole different thing. But if you want to get at us, literally at, at, at us, all you got to do is get at us by going to facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, or use the hashtag comic book click to talk about all the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. I helm at Major Issues CBC on Twitter. So if you have the Twitter machine, go ahead and get at me. Let's talk about Teen Titans. Tell me what your favorite song was. Who's your favorite Teen Titan? Well, maybe we could talk about that. We're, um... We have a uh, Gmail. I go to comic book click at gmail.com. There are so many ways to reach us. We are me and you for the most part. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm always on my are, phone on, on all those things. There, like, I, if you any point during the day it could be three o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday and it's rainy and you're just like, you know what? I want to I want to message the comic book click Instagram. Yep, and I, I have I, the Instagram on my phone, so I will answer any of your message, any of your questions. Any fan mail? Some, you like, yeah, I want to know what the Don's favorite Batman the Animated Series Even episode is. if you is. want a shout just out. Hit, just hit me up. I'll let you know. We'll have a whole conversation about it. I pinky promise you because that's what we're here to do. I've been to the future and we've become the latest and greatest things to come to comic book and comic book media, especially when it comes to reviews. I've been there and that's what we become, but we only get there because of you guys and you guys are already doing it. You guys are exceeding all my expectations. You're liking, sharing, and subscribing. But if you could do me one more favor, try to rate and review us on iTunes. The reviews are now starting to come in, and people seem to kind of sort of like us. So, uh, rating reviews on iTunes because it's the quickest way we can get feedback from you guys, the audience, on what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. It's the quickest way for us to grow as podcasters, and it's the quickest way for us to grow our audience because there's strength in numbers, and we need more members of this clique so that we can tell other people that they're worthy. I mean, that's what we're all here for. This medium here is incredibly rewarding, but only only if you're able to share and express it with your friends and that's what we are here we are your friends we are your family we are your titans so we are Groot oh and we are Groot I like that I like that and we are Groot but my name is George Serrano aka the Don I am Dan the comic man and Star-Lord did nothing wrong (laughs) and this is our Teen Titans recap and review and whether or not you are a shape-shifting changeling, whether you're the daughter of Trigon, whether you're just somebody who can't even get their own solo movie, or just somebody who wants to crack an egg on it. Pull up your tape of your upbeat inspirational song about life. Get your superhero movie on, and remember that we are the click, but you, yes you, are worthy. 